I got a tweet from Green Element yesterday asking if there will ever be a Turing test for Tesla full self-driving. And that got me thinking, and I think I have one, a Turing driving test, so to speak. Let's look at what it could involve and what the consequences of Tesla succeeding at it could be. For those of you interested in investing, check out Webull, an amazing platform for buying and selling stocks, and now cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and others. Open an account and get a free stock valued at up to $200, and fund your account and get another free stock valued at up to $1,600. Check out the link in the description and help the channel at the same time. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. So I wanna take a quick moment to congratulate Inspiration4 on a safe landing yesterday and just an amazing, <laughs> like it just went off like clockwork. I mean, from the launch on, on the beginning of their window that they had all the way up through, you know, just a very uneventful orbital, you know, period for three days almost. And the deorbit, I watched the entire thing from, you know, before their deorbit burn yesterday. It was really pretty amazing. So anyway, I know this video is going to go out on Monday, but it's, I'm recording it on Sunday. So it was yesterday for me, two days ago for all of you. But anyway, it was an absolutely amazing mission. It was so smooth. SpaceX makes it look so darn easy. It's pretty ridiculous. <laughs> Speaking of nobody being able to catch up, you know, I talk about nobody being able to catch up to Tesla. It seems like nobody's going to catch up to SpaceX at this point. Anyway, so a huge congratulations to that and also a massive you know wow to Elon Musk as well the St. Jude fundraiser was at somewhere around 120 130 million dollars of their 200 million dollar fundraising goal for this mission and Elon Musk yesterday tweeted that he would throw in an extra 50 million dollars to help close out the 200 million dollar gap so what a rock star you know <laughs> you are a pretty amazing human being um, and I'm going to touch on this very very lightly but speaking of the opposite of amazing human beings I'm very curious about what is going on with the presidency right now. Uh, there's been a, you know, a lot of people have mentioned the fact that the president has not had any mention of Tesla almost at all since he took office. But this is an entirely different thing, right? Uh, civilians in space, it seems like some sort of at least tweet or phone call or something, you know, publicly congratulating these people. And SpaceX, which again, totally American company, less than two decades old, doing miraculous things out there. It just seems like that might be worthwhile. So that's that's all I'm going to say about that. I'm going to leave it alone. If you're interested in my actual thoughts, you can check out this other video, or you can check me out on Twitter where you can hear my, you know, more unadulterated thoughts. How's that? Anyway, on to the main topic. I want to start off with a little clip from Elon Musk talking about how he expects full self-driving to be 10 times safer than human drivers. You know, relatively soon. He doesn't put a timeline on it, but here we go. Tesla is much more than an electric car company. We are developing full self-driving vehicles with practical vision-based artificial intelligence, including chip development on the inference level and on the training level. I should emphasize that we believe autonomous driving can be achieved entirely by vision neural nets. After all, humans are running a biological vision neural net in order to drive, so it makes sense that computers would be able to drive using a silicon camera neural net. That said, safety is the top priority when we design Tesla vehicles and I'm confident that we can achieve full self-driving with 10 times higher safety than the average human driver. To add on top of this, Elon Musk tweeted out that the approximately 2,000 beta test drivers have driven for nearly a year without any accidents at, you know, a super rough guess at average driving distances and stuff. That's somewhere around 20 million miles of beta testing driving with zero accidents. So that's pretty astounding. But you have to remember here that humans are still in the loop. There's lots of disengagements when you watch the beta driving videos. As an interesting little aside here, it's going to be kind of weird about Tesla getting this data because what they're doing is they're driving so many miles without accidents that they are having issues probably with collecting data that is of significance for their neural network training. So it's kind of a weird situation where ironically, they need more problematic data, but they're not getting it. But obviously they don't want actual accidents. So if you go back to the AI day talks, and I'll put a link up here, you can see when they talk about simulation that one of the things they're trying to do is simulate Tesla's getting into near accident situations. So it's really interesting. They're coming up with a, with a situation 
situation right now where the, the Teslas are so, the real world Teslas are so safe that they're actually having to do a simulator to put them into harm's way to actually train them for more dangerous situations. So anyway, that's very, very cool. But the upshot of this is still humans are in the loop. So humans are able to take over at a moment's notice and they're having to do that to keep the driving safe because the cars do still fail. So anyway, what would a Tesla driving Turing test actually be? Well, first of all, let's go back and talk about the old school original Turing test. So Alan Turing, of course, very, very famous. He, you know, was the subject of the imitation game. If you've seen that movie, uh, I'm also a huge fan of history. His, his greatest sort of um, wartime accomplishment was that he was the person who sort of invented the theory of modern computing. They were able to use that in computers that really, really primitive early computers that they built to decipher the German Enigma machine. And that helped to win World War II because they had a lot of, you know, classified information that the Germans didn't know that the British and the Americans had. So that was a huge, huge thing. He also, however, later on after the war, before his very unfortunate, untimely demise, came up with a Turing test. He came up with a test where what he said was, and you know, remember at the time, we're talking about very primitive computers and stuff. So what he did was he came up with a situation where he put a human being on one side of a partition and that person had a teletype machine, right? So they could type in things and, and that would transmit the data to a human being and a computer on the other side of a partition. And there would be a human responder and a computer responder, which would just be like A and B to the person who is evaluating this. That person would type questions and A or B would answer. And the idea was that the human being that was evaluating this would eventually not be able to tell the difference between the human responder and the computer responder. So that was Alan Turing's original Turing test. Now, people People, of course, have taken that and they've run with it and they've come up with all different kinds of possibilities for Turing tests, etc. But that was the original thing. But basically, the, the kernel of this is at a specific task, can a computer fool a human being into thinking that that is actually a human being? And, and the idea is that this shows some sort of, at least in a, a, well, actually it's a fairly generalized domain in the original test, right? Because the human being could ask any question to this computer and to this person. So anyway, it's a generalized artificial intelligence or some kind of intelligence or something. So that's basically the test. Now this in a Turing driving test, of course, is going to be very, very specific to driving, obviously, and not to other generalized things. But the idea would be, can a computer fool a human being or human beings around it into thinking it's a human being driving the car? Of course, a follow-up to this is, will the car require radar or LIDAR? And you know, as Elon Musk says, do human beings need this? <laughs> Obviously not. And by the way, who has the most data to back up their understanding of the most likely outcome here, right? This is Tesla. Without the data, I believe that most other companies really don't even have an idea that they're doing it wrong because you know, Tesla's gone up these other, I don't know, paths <laughs> and it's found the blocks there before, right? They've hit local maxima and they've been unable to pass through that local maximum to get through to real full self-driving. So they, they have finally kind of reduced it down and simplified it. And I know it's a super complex system, but they've simplified it down to essentially what is a human being, which is eyeballs and a brain. So anyway, I'm really thinking that most of these other companies that are working on full self-driving don't even have the data yet to understand that they're not doing it right. And so it's going to take them a long time to get to the point where they're like, wait a second, we're not doing this right. And then to go, oh crap, we have to go back and follow what Tesla did. So what they should probably do is just stop doing what they're doing right now. Assume that Tesla's right because they've got so much more data than they do and go and start trying to do it that way and catch up. But anyway, so let's take a Tesla as it is right now. So it's just a vision system and let's like maybe black out the windows. So maybe we'll have to do this test in Florida or something, right? Because most other states in the United States, and I'm just going to use the United States because the uh, FSD system is, is much much more advanced in the United States than most other countries, although they should catch up relatively quickly. But anyway, so we can black out the windows so nobody else can actually see inside to see whether somebody is sitting in the driver's seat. And then we'll place an identical Tesla right next to it, right? And those two cars will drive for, let's say, several hours through varied traffic conditions with other people following and driving around them. So what you have is you have one car with a human driver in it and one car with a machine driver in it. And let's just put an above average driver into the other car. And remember that driving, you know, like anything else is on a bell curve. So there is an average driver and then there's a better driver and then there are worse drivers. There are definitely, I'm sure anybody who's driven out there understands that there are definitely drivers who are worse than average. And by the way, autonomy is always going to exist on that curve, right? It's going to be somewhere on that bell curve of human drivers. And for a time, it'll be worse than the best human drivers, definitely. 
But if you think about it, remember, you know, chess in the 1990s or Go just a few years ago? Who's the best at these things right now? It's not a human being anymore. And now think about drivers and driving. Obviously, that's much more complicated than any game, but I expect, and you know, if you think about this, the likely outcome in the, uh, you know, give it a time, whatever you want, one year or five years or 10 years, the likely outcome is that eventually these computerized drivers are going to be better than even the best human drivers. So in other words, what you could do is put them on the F1 racing circuit or something like that, and they would beat human beings because they're going to be better than the best human drivers out there. That That's, you know, it's almost definitely going to have to come and it'll be eventually like, you know, playing Go tournaments and chess tournaments. Human beings will still do it. They'll still drive Formula One or something and they'll be like, wow, yeah, this is really cool that we're doing this. But they're also going to know that if a computer was on the road with them, if a computer was driving the car, that it would just beat them, hands down, no problem. So anyway, that's coming in the future, right? That computers are going to be better than the best human drivers on that bell curve. Right now, what Elon Musk is talking about is being 10 times safer than the average human driver. So it's gonna push them to the right of the bell curve. They're going to be better, but they won't be better than the best human drivers. They'll just be kind of in the range of the best human drivers. But anyway, back to the touring test. What we'll do is we'll have witnesses who kind to follow along and drive along with these cars, right? Nobody knows which one is which. And those two will drive a, you know, they'll just navigate. They'll be on some path. They'll be like, go from Miami to Orlando or something and drive through a bunch of cities, drive through Fort Lauderdale and all of that. So not necessarily on the highways, but give it very different kind of traffic conditions. And the goal of the people around it is going to be to guess which one is the human driver and which one is the computerized driver. And of course, the final outcome is that when human beings can no longer, the witnesses around these cars can no longer tell which is which, then it's past the touring driving test. Of course, right now, this wouldn't work. <laughs> if you drive for a few miles, the computerized, you know, the Tesla autopilot is going to have an exception at some point. And, you know, if a human being doesn't step in or something, the car is going to fail in some way that's really obviously not human. So people will be able to tell. But at some point in the near-ish future, it's going to happen that it's going to be as good as a human driver. And this is going to, you know, probably somebody's going to do a YouTube video on this, right? They're going to be like, here's a person, here's the full self-driving and let's go at it and you know what they'll do is maybe have a follow car that drives behind them and they'll have people vote on car a or b or something maybe one tesla's white and the other one's black and so the people will vote which one is the human driver and which one is the machine driver and what happens then when these cars are as good as human drivers they're almost instantly going to be better and all of them are going to be of that quality you're no longer going to have this bell curve with like average human drivers and bad human drivers and good human drivers all of the cars that are driving this software are going to be that good and as that moves up all of them are going to get better and better and better than most drivers so at some point if these cars are actually 10 times safer than human drivers, that means that the human being is going to screw up before the machine. And this, by the way, ties into future car releases from Tesla, so it's speculation time. So just to throw this out here, and I can actually do a whole video on this eventually if anybody's interested, so let me know. I believe that the $25,000 Tesla is going to be sold, maybe only briefly, but it's going to be sold just to show that Elon keeps his promises. And you know, he's like, here's the $25,000 Tesla, you can have it, and it's on sale for six months, and then we're taking it away. But I believe that Tesla is mostly going to reserve these cars for the robo-taxi network. And the next more cheaper car is probably either not ever going to happen because it's not necessary or it's not going to be sold, right? So there might be a $20,000 car, but Tesla is never going to sell it to consumers. They're only going to use it for the robo taxi fleet, right? So it would be like city type driving where people only need a very compact car just to get themselves from places to places. And they will add that to things like you know, the, the $25,000 Model 2, which is not gonna be called the Model 2, and the Model 3 and the Model Y and the Cybertruck as, you know, depending on what size car you need for a given circumstance. This system will provide way more profit for Tesla than selling a car for like $20,000 or something. So that's why I think it's just a given that they're gonna do that. And consumers will save too, because it will cost us less than the approximately 72 cents per mile to rent the car rather than own a car. So anyway, we will see about this. But in the meantime, Teslas will eventually be 
statistically much safer than human drivers. Will there eventually be a reverse Turing test where human beings will reveal themselves by being worse drivers? Probably so. All right, I hope you found this episode fun and thought-provoking. If you did, definitely like it so other people can find it. And of course, consider subscribing for more of this. As always, a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon. Thank you all so much for your support. I really do appreciate it. It means the world to me. Thank you. And for those of you interested in investing, check out Webull, an amazing platform for buying and selling stocks, and now cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and others. Open an account and get a free stock valued at up to $200, and fund your account and get another free stock valued at up to $1,600. Check out the link in the description and help the channel at the same time. Thank you. And don't forget about our merch store, which now has physics is the law, everything else is a recommendation, which is a quote by Elon Musk, as well as other t-shirts, mugs, tumblers, etc., etc. Check it out in the description. And finally, don't forget we are both Tesla and Amazon affiliates, although sadly to say <laughs> that Tesla's, the Tesla referral program is going away, so I don't know exactly how much longer it'll last, but maybe you can catch it before it goes away. Definitely check out the link if you're interested, but the Amazon thing is still there, so you can definitely go shopping there and support the channel. And as always, feel free to ask me questions in the comments or at my email address, which is drknowitallknows at gmail.com. Till next time, bye-bye.